Yeah! yeah. <laughs> nice dust cloud. That was a good one. <laughs> what was in there? Two pounds? Three? That was more? Hi, welcome to AmbleSmith.com. Well, it's been a while since we made a video. And what we're going to do is we're going to change up the format a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to start doing cartridge specific videos. Uh, the first cartridge we're going to introduce and concentrate on is the 308 or 762 NATO. The two rifles we're going to use is the Remington 700 that I built and we're going to be using the Fulton Armory Peerless M1. We're going to try to use as many different varieties of components as possible. Eventually what I want to do is take some proven loads and build ammunition for each rifle with different die sets, complete die sets. Don't do anything special, just load them like you normally would. And then put them on paper and see how they do. So let's go ahead, I want to get some close-ups on these and go over what the rifles are going to be doing and what they are and how we're going to be using them. One of the reasons why we chose the 308 is one is really, really popular. It's one of the most popular hunting cartridges and it's one of the more available military surplus cartridges. So what we really want to do is we're going to take some military surplus ammunition and we're going to test it. Then we're going to take some good hand loads like these 175 grain match games. We're going to develop some really nice hand loads. And we're going to use sporting type projectiles to partitions, X bullets, anything new that we can get our hands on we're going to try to throw in here. We're also going to do some cast bullet work. We're going to try to do a lot of cast bullet work. Um, this particular bullet here is a Lee 200 grain. And the reason why we're going to use this is, I believe, it has the best combination of weight to powder capacity to give me the pressure I needed to port on this M1 to get it to function reliably. And that's what we want. Uh, we thought about doing the 223 first, but the 223, um, really doesn't work very well cast bullets in semi-automatics. I think we can make this work. Okay, here's the top view of the Garand. Um, we went over this in an earlier video, but we really didn't dig into it all that deep. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the action and show you the difference. Well, looking inside here, it really looks like any other Garand. The only difference is right here. It's that spacer. And all that spacer is used for is to fill the gap from where the 308 and the 30-06 is. It keeps them from jumping out of the clip under recoil. Other than that, this particular rifle is all hand put together by a master gunsmith at Fulton Armory. Um, it's built on a Springfield Armory receiver. It's one of those packages you send the receiver in and they build the gun for you. I have had nothing but good luck with this rifle um, at any range. The only thing that I had to watch on here is the rear sight has a tendency to walk on the elevation side. So other than that, that's the only thing I really got to watch out for. I just want to show you some of the attention to detail they put into this thing. Well, the laminated stock is just amazing. I love it. But when we look inside of it, it's all glass bedded all through here entire action is glass bedded and it's, they did a beautiful job. Not only is the receiver bedded, but so is the, um, the trigger mechanism as well. The thing is an absolute perfect fit. Now on the rifle itself, um, pretty much what they did was they took a bunch of parts on the oversize and they fit them together. The only thing you really got to worry about with the M1 Grand, and which we really have to watch out for too, is up here, up in the port. We gotta really make sure what powders we use. We can't use a too slow of a burning powder. And the reason why is this operating rod, it extends the entire length and then some of the barrel. And it has a slight bend into it in order for it to get around the, uh, the contour of the barrel. And if this thing gets too much pressure on it, it'll bend. So we really have to watch it. Now there's ways around that, and one of those is to get an adjustable gas system. 
But for most of you guys out there, I don't think any of you are going to just run out and get an adjustable gas system. So we're just going to work with what we got. And the first powder we're probably going to use in this is going to be Varget. Okay, for this rifle, we had the Remington 700. It has a 24 inch uh, Douglas Premium Barrel, which has a 1 to 10 inch twist. The trigger in here is a Timney, and it's set to right about 11 ounces, so it's really, really light. The scope on here is my loophole six and a half by 20. This, I got this scope before the 30 millimeter version came out. And one of the things um, I did was I took a return address label <laughs> and I wrapped my top turret with it because what loads I use vary quite a bit. And so on here I had the actual load, which is my 175 grain Match King with 44 and a half grains of Varget. And I have this out to 800 meters. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. Um, let me show you the chronograph we're using and some of the dies we're going to be using. For chronographs, we're going to be using the Crony Gamma Master with printer. It's a really simple chronograph, it's really reliable. I have another chronograph that I spent a lot of money for. It's a PAC uh, Model 1. I can't get that thing to clock a bullet for nothing. This thing will clock my 17 Remington and will clock an air rifle in cloudy conditions like we are now. It's great. So we're going to be using this. And what we want to do is um, go through exactly how to use this thing so you guys can learn is how to use it as we go along. Because this thing does all kinds of stuff. It'll you put 10 shots through there, it'll give you your standard deviation, everything. And it's really helpful when you take the um, ammunition from the bench and you want to see what your shot to shot spread is. And the printer is really nice because then you can just roll up whatever it is that uh, you printed out and put it in that box of ammunition or put it in your notebook. And the cool thing about it is it just folds right up. So for dies, <clears throat> well, we're going to purchase some more dies, and I'm going to use the dies that I got. Um, for the match ammunition up to this point, I'm going to be using the the Redding competition die, which is a nice one. And we're only going to be using this die for seating jacketed bullets. Um, I do have I have a hybrid die set here. I have a RCBS competition full length die, which I use for the Grand, and I have a Next sizing die from Redding that I use for the bolt action. But for cast bullets, we have to do something completely different. Now, the cast bullets, what I'm going to be using is um, this RCBS competition die. And because of the nature of cast bullets, I'm using the flare die from a uh, Hornady set for 30 carbine, so I can put a bell in the case. It helps when you seat the bullet from shaving it, which is kind of nice. And we got some other bullets we're going to screw around with too. We have a um, 110 grain hollow point mold for a uh, 32 Smith & Wesson we're going to mess with for the squib loads. Uh, we're going to do a, a lot of different things. The interesting thing about the cast bullets, though, is we're going to also experiment with the crimp tension on them as well. Apparent cast bullets are real sensitive to crimp tension. Sometimes more crimp is more accurate in some rifles and less crimp more accurate in others. We want to find out what the difference between these two rifles that it likes the most. Just a quick note on primers. Um, for the, since we are using the Garand, we are going to have to use either the CCI number 34 primer or the Wolf Large Rifle primer, which is mil spec, in order for us to reduce the hazards of a slam fire, especially, especially with the Garand in 308, because the bull has much longer travel and gets more velocity. And we're also going to use that same primer in the um, bolt action. And then once we transition to the match primer, we'll use that same proven load that we use in each rifle with the match primer in here. 
Well, as we go through the 308 cartridge specific series, we're going to go ahead and introduce another cartridge at the same time, which will probably be the 45 ACP. Both cartridges are extremely popular, and we're going to have a lot of fun working with both of them. If you guys have any questions or comments, please come over to the forum and ask them there. Thanks for watching.